Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for watching today. This uh, video is called uh, Homeland Security Big Sis Janet Napolitano Gives Security Clearance to the Muslim Brotherhood. Okay, I'm going to play this video for you. I don't know if I've played it for you before. Uh, so if I have, please uh, forgive me. It's 6 minutes and 50 seconds long, so just skip the 7 minutes if you have. If you haven't, this is an incredible video. And I want to give a little uh, personal testimony, a little personal story about this afterwards. I try not to do that too much because I know, you know, it's just hearsay and who really cares. But I, the, the Muslim Brotherhood is the thing that got me started. Like, this is the very first thing I started researching as a conspiracy theorist. And I just, I would really like to share that story with you, uh, if I may. So, uh, let me get to it. And also to assist the rebels in Libya. Uh, he did not get any information from me or my department, to my knowledge. He didn't give any guidance on that at all? Nobody from your Homeland Security did that? No. Okay. Uh, did the uh, President get any information or guidance from Homeland Security before his decision to um, pull out the troops from Iraq or uh, draw down in Afghanistan? Do you assist in that at all, or anybody right. from your department? Uh, again, uh, uh, these are not matters really within the purview of the Department of Homeland Security. Okay. So they were considered completely unrelated to our own Homeland Security? Well, uh, you can... Uh, homeland Security covers so many fields uh, that I, I wouldn't... that what I would say uh, simply is if the question is, uh, well, the question were we involved was, in that? Was I involved? Did you provide information that would have been utilized in any of those decisions? Not that I thought. Okay. I thought. Uh, last year, Admiral Mullen said that uh, his words, the national debt is the single biggest threat to our national security. We have millions of people coming into this country on visas, some illegally. Um, who come in and get health care and leave without paying. It's an ongoing problem. Uh, we now are seeing that there'll be Americans who are not getting the health care as quickly as they need or that they need because uh, it appears we're moving to ration care. So it should be a very important issue. We've inquired of the State Department um, about the applications for visas. They tell us that there's no provision in the application that indicates whether they've been diagnosed with any condition, heart problems, cancer, pregnancies, needed surgeries, uh, on the, the application for a visa. So that's not considered at all when people come in. We're also told uh, by the State Department that even though the spouse's name is on the application, they don't normally ever check the spouse's name on the terrorist watch list before deciding to approve the benefits of a visa. Uh, do you think that would be a good idea to check the spouse's name on the terrorist watch list, or do you concur that there's just not time and it's not worth it? Well, uh, I, I can't answer because I haven't seen what the State Department responded to or, or, or what they saw. Well, I'm just, yeah. That wasn't my question to you. My question to you is, would it be a good idea to check the spouses on the terrorist watch list? Well, I think that one of the, the things that we have been able to do over the past several years is to unify databases, uh, unify search engines in such a way that those kinds of security checks can be more easily done. But if they don't do the checks, it's a problem, isn't it? It could be a problem, Thank but you. again... All right, let me move on. Uh, do, do you make the final decision as to who's put on your countering violent extremism working group? We have an individual in the department who is the lead on CVE. Right. And, and Are you so, consulted at all on who's put on that uh, working group? I have not been, no. But right. uh, are you, you were aware that uh, the president of ISNA, Imam Majid, uh, was a member of that working group, correct? Yeah, I, I can't answer that. I don't know whether that's an accurate statement or not. Okay, well, you can go look at your own website and find the documentation. He, he has been on your working group, the Countering Violence, uh, Violent Extremism. Um, do you know how many of the members of your Countering Violent Extremism are um, members of Muslim Brotherhood? Uh, again, since I, I'm not involved in the appointment, but if I might, 
Well, let me, my time is running out, so I really don't have time. But, but I've got a very serious question that, that needs to be confronted. Well, uh, are you familiar with Mohammed? Uh, are you sir, familiar sir, with I, I would like the ability to, to expand on my answer if that is all right with you. Uh, I don't have time. I'm running out, to, and, and I can't be filibustered. Oh, well, okay. But let me ask you, um, Mohammed Elibiari, -E is I was a member of the working group. You promoted him, and it said there. I've got articles here that say you swore him in as a member now of your. Um, let's see. The Homeland Security Advisory Group. Uh, he's apparently been given a secret clearance. Uh, do you know, Mr. Ellie uh, Bieri? Yes. Okay. Uh, were you aware he had a secret clearance? Uh, uh, I believe everybody on the Homeland Security Advisory Council ultimately gets a secret clearance. <laughs> Would you be surprised if they, well, uh, I don't have time, but um, were you aware that he spoke at the uh, big event in Texas honoring the Ayatollah Khomeini? Uh, I'm not aware of all the places he has spoken. Uh, the chairman, his time is expired. Let me, if I could just have 15 seconds, this is critical. Secretary, were you aware that a week ago today, from his home computer, he accessed the SLIC database, got information off, and has been shopping a story to national media on Islamophobia directed at the governor of Texas and the security folks there in Texas. Were you aware of that? No. Um, Thank you, Mr. I'm telling you it happened. Do we need to appoint somebody or will you have that investigated yourself and if so, by whom? Well, uh, since I don't know the facts, I'll have to look into the facts. So you'll be the one to make that call? We'll have somebody, and it'll be myself or someone. Does it concern you at all that it happened? The chairman's time has expired. Uh, the token of the Mr. Quigley is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary. Ain't that great how she can't even answer any questions whatsoever? Okay, so that's the end of the video. You can turn it off right here because the rest of me is going to be... Uh, real quick, I'll keep this painless and quick as possible. Okay, for some of you, those of you who've been watching me for a while, you know, if you heard me say right now and then, I was in the military for five years, okay? And I joined when I was 22, all right? And whenever I was uh, 18 or 19, I can't m remember which, 18 or 19, I got arrested for a DUI, all right? So then three, four years later, whatever, I tried to join the military. I got in. I almost didn't get in, though, because of the DUI. They didn't, you know, I almost didn't get in because of that. So anyway, got in the military. Uh, after my, I went to I went to Diego Garcia first, which is an island out in the middle of the Indian Ocean. I was there for a year, and then I went to Brunswick, Maine. That's where I was, my last station, my last command. That's where I was. Okay, in my job, I was a computer guy. I did all sorts of uh, anything that ever happened to an airplane was documented on paperwork, and that was my job was to be in control on the paperwork. You know, I made you know I made sure that they're written correctly. You know, blah, 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 they're called vids maps. They're just paperwork. They're just paperwork for everything. Either, Paperwork on changing an engine all the way to just replacing a bolt that kept a plane seat in place. So anyway, uh, everybody in all these different work centers, there was like 15 different work centers, you know, and uh, we all worked on computers and the main host, the main computer was in this security clearance area. So no one could get in there and jack it up because if you jacked up the host, you jacked up all the computers, okay? So basically, uh, there was a guy, there were two people who were allowed in that back security clearance room and they required yes as you just would imagine a security clearance okay so if all these systems crashed the only way to fix this was to reboot the host computer behind the security clearance door well i worked night check which was from two o'clock at night till about 11 from two o'clock in the afternoon till 10 30 11 30 at night depending on what happened that day now there the person who was who had this the two people who had the security clearance okay there was an e6 and an e5 so the E6 never had to come in because he was a higher rank than the E5, so it's always shit rolls downhill, you know, so the lower rank person always has to come in and do it. So whenever these computers would crash, 
They would all, and they always seem to always crash at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, okay? And then I would have to call in the person off base who did, who do work day check, who, <clears throat> excuse me, who had to be there at like 5 o'clock in the morning, and he stayed from 5 o'clock in the morning till 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on what happened that day. So I would have to call him at 11 o'clock at night and have him come all the way into work to just go inside this, this room to hit the reboot button so we could continue our business on the computers. And they would not let me get a security clearance because of my DUI. And you have no idea how awful and how hard that was for me because this guy had kids, he had a wife and everything. You have no idea how hard it was for me to call this guy, wake him up most of the time, not all the time, but wake him up most of the time at 11 o'clock at night, tell him, hey, you have to come in and go inside this building and, or and go inside the room and reboot the computer for us. Because I had a DUI in my record, so they would not give me a security clearance. Now, but they will give a Muslim Brotherhood person a top security clearance. The guys, the Muslim Brotherhood who hold rallies, Constantly, they just they just did it in Cairo last year, where they're going to one day kill all the Jews who are supposedly that Israel is our biggest ally. They give the Muslim Brotherhood a secret a security secret clearance, but they wouldn't give me one because I have a DUI. This is why the Muslim Brotherhood. This is why I've been fired up from the start whenever I started doing this stuff. Because, like I said, the Muslim Brotherhood was the very search, the very first topic I I researched on, and I've never looked back ever since because it was just as bad as I thought which is half the reason why I didn't want to get into it anyway, but I thought, you know what, what good does it to be ignorant to it and turn the other, you know, just turn away from it and not even pretend it's even going on. So that's why this video really, really, really pisses me off and, and strikes a chord with me. I couldn't get a clearance because of a DUI. These guys are threats to our biggest ally. Not only that, us in general, because, you know, we're infidels. So Islam, you know, wants to kill infidels, and that's who we are, and that's who they always call us, you know, the great Satan, you know. First there's Israel, and then there's us. So I find that I just, I, I can't, I still, to this day, I cannot wrap my head around this video, and I can't wrap my head around anything else. If I would have known this back when I was in the military, I never would have made it out, because they would have had my ass in the brig, because I would have said, this is the biggest crock of crap I've ever heard in my life. i got to disrupt someone's life, you know, I thought, hey, I know you're probably sleeping because you got to be here at work in six hours for another 12 hour shift or whatever, but you have to come in and hit the, and just hit the reboot button. That's all you got to do. Because I can't do it because I have a DUI from three or four years prior. And that's the only thing that was on my record. It's the only thing on my police record. I have a freaking speeding ticket. Just one DUI. And they're like, nope, sorry, you can't have it. Unreal. Unreal. So thank you guys so much for watching and ladies. I appreciate your support subscribers as always. Thank you Please keep the awesome comments coming and if you don't agree, that's fine. I appreciate it. Just I appreciate your time I appreciate you being concerned about this and I just appreciate you doing what you're doing So thank you all very much as always. I am very 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 humbled and, and, and grateful for for everything So thank you very much for watching